just to let you guys know before the video starts, um, I am changing my schedule from to Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday to Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Enjoy the video, guys. Welcome back to my channel. So, it's Wednesday, which means it is Creepy Video Day. So, today, I am doing part two of reading creepy pasta stories. So, let's just jump straight in. And today, and the first one, actually, should I say the first one we're doing is the origin of Eyeless Jack. Eyeless Jack was originally a normal straight A student until he met a girl named Jenny who was part of a cult gathering about a demon called Chernobog. Cherno Jack involuntarily was made the sacrifice to be a son of Chernobog, Cher and in the process he had his eyes ripped out, which left him with mere gaping holes that secreted a black liquid. Possessed in, in a fit of rage, Jack killed the cult members and ate their kidneys with a set of razor-sharp pointed teeth that he was adapt, that he was adapt with during the process of the sacrifice. Human organs were, were his new craving, although kidneys were his cho chosen favorite. Thus the terror of Eyeless Jack had begun. Eyeless Jack typically wears black attire consisting of a jet black hoodie, a long and equally as black pants or jeans. The hood of his ashy black hoodie is typically up and worn over his head, allowing only a minimalistic amount of the shaggy bangs of his urban copper hair to be shown, sprawling from underneath. Besides his now trademark navy blue mask that lacks any defi defining facial features besides his eye sockets, he also wears black gloves. Cool. Um, so yeah, that's the origin of Alice Jack. Pretty creepy stuff. Let's see. Well, I'm trying to find another story for you guys. Milk and cookies. That sounds kind of creepy. No. It seems too long to read. Okay, here's another, another origin story. Ben underscore drowned. And this will be the last one I read. Ben had always been a normal kid. A very big Legend of Zelda fan. Why he even looked like Link, with his long blonde hair, rather white eyes, but let's rewind back. Ben had always been a normal kid. This was a lie. This went for his parents too, his stereotypical parents who always hugged their son in porches around the house, or made him lunch every day, were not so normal either. Kids in Ben's neighborhood always thought he was spoiled since he got Zelda games almost every night. But they didn't know his horrible, his awful truth. His horrible life behind his house's walls. Ben sat on the swing set of the playground of his school, swinging slowly back and forth. He looked at his bruised legs. They're only from falling off of the playground, he had always lied to his teachers. Ben finally muttered to himself, they taught to never judge a book by its cover. Well, they didn't teach it good enough. He stopped swinging and lifted himself off the swing. He grabbed his backpack and started to trudge home. When he got home, he saw his parents doing what they usually did when they got home, or when he got home, watching daytime television. When his dad heard the door locked behind Ben, he turned the TV off. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. He turned and looked at Ben with his cold, unwelcoming eyes. It is 5 o'clock right now. You have to make dinner for me and your mother by 6.30. If you don't, there will be consequences. His dad said in a monotone voice. His mother and father got up and walked into the room, shutting the door. Behind them, Ben slaved over the food he was making his parents. For what seemed like forever, when he finally finished getting their plates ready, he looked at the clock. His heart dropped like a stone to the bottom of a pond. 6.39, he hissed to himself. Panically, he quickly rushed to the table where his parents were already sitting. His father glared at Ben with a look of sourness and hatred. Ben looked away, holding back tears, and set the plates down in front of his parents in silence. He then rushed in. 
He then rushed to his room. At 8.45 that night, his father ripped open the door to Ben's room, his face red with rage. You finished cooking late, he growled. I'm sorry, there weren't any clean dishes in. Ben attempted to finish his sentence, but his dad grabbed Ben by his hair and slammed him against the wall. Ten minutes, he shouted in Ben's face. Ben was now crying. I'm sorry, he choked through quiet sobs. It was too late for that. His dad had thrown him onto the ground and kicking him, began kicking him. Worthless, he shouted. Lazy. Ben huddled into a ball on the floor of his bedroom and able to defend himself. His father shouted and shouted at Ben for what seemed an eternity, and he couldn't make out the words he was saying. Finally, his father stopped kicking him. His angry expression faded to neutral, and he walked out of his room. Ben's world faded to darkness. <clears throat> ben woke up, uh, woke up the next morning, laying on the floor of his bedroom. He was wearing the now blood-stained clothes he had worn the night before. He slowly got up and limped to the kitchen. Luckily, his father had already gone to work, and his mother was running, was out running errands. He turned and looked at the dining table. It had a game with a note taped to it. He walked over to it and saw the game labeled Majora's Mask. The note read a simple phrase. Don't tell. His eyes lit up from the sad, broken look to a happy, excited look. The Majora's Mask, he gasped. This game is brand new. It came out three days ago. He eagerly ran over to his game system and popped it in the game. His eyes widened as the main menu popped up. He then made a file named Ben. He then smiled to himself and said, I'm sure glad it's Saturday. Ah, oh, God, I keep getting distracted. He played all afternoon until his mother got home. She ignored his presence and walked into her bedroom. Finally, his dad got home. It was 5.34. You have until 6.30. There will be consequences, he grumbled. Ben sadly turned off the game and made the food. When he was finished, his eyes reluctantly turned and glanced at the clock. To his surprise, it was only it was only 6.03. Mommy, Daddy, food is ready, he called to his parents. His father emerged from his room with a somewhat satisfied face. His parents ate their food, and Ben strutted into his room proudly. A few days passed, and his parents were having a party. Ben sat on the section on the living room on the edge of his seat. He had reached the boss battle where he was fighting Skull Kid. Ben, come out of the backyard and introduce yourself, his father shouted from the backyard. Ben rolled his eyes. Ben rolled his eyes, paused the game. rolled his eyes and paused the game. He trotted out to the backyard. It was at least eleven o'clock, eleven PM, way past his bedtime. All the adults around were drunk, including his parents, and this is Ben, my he's my useless son, his dad attempted to say. Ben was used to the comments, kept his stern face. Aw, he's kinda cute, the adults said, gathering around him like chickens at a feeding time. At feeding time. Finally his dad picked up and said, Hey guys, watch this and threw Ben into the pool. After Ben had plunged into the icy water, panic had set in. He remembered that he never learned how to swim. He splashed and gurgled for help, only to receive none. He cried and screamed, kicked and flailed his arms around. Nothing helped. Accepting his horrible fate, he let himself sink to the bottom of the pool. His world was swirling around him, and he eventually floated to the top again, lifeless. The last words he had heard in his head were, You've met a horrible fate, haven't you? Years had passed, and the couple had already been charged with child abuse and were arrested. Ben's death was all over the news, but this news was long forgotten. But only one person remembered was an old man. He slowly hobbled over to Ben's old house, which was abandoned. Arriving at the door, he looked for a key to let him in. To his satisfaction, he found a key, a dusty key sitting under the dusty mat. He unlocked the door with a loud creak and let himself in. Looking around, he saw the old game system. He walked over to it and took the game that was currently in, in, in it out. It had been collecting dust over the years. He cackled with a light. Perfect, he mumbled, and put the game in his pocket. He then walked out back out of the house, locking the door. Who was the old man? Hmm.
change. Well, there you guys go. That was part two of reading Kirby Boss stories. Yes, this is the end. Because there's no more good ones, and I was only reading a couple that I thought were good. <laughs> um, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up so I know. Please follow all my social media down below in the description. And please click my bubble to subscribe to my channel. And I will see you all on Friday. Peace out, chillers.